But in the last 24 hours, buyers have sort of rushed back into those comforting hours of mega growth and, and the stay-at-home stock. But it does seem clear that uh, not all of them are going to be winners now in the long run. So how should investors handle these gyrations? I don't know. I mean, some of these uh, work-at-home stocks, like you start looking at Peloton, Zoom, I mean, they're still 20% below their highs. And I don't know about you, Charles, but my Bowflex is still sitting in the basement collecting dust from the 90s. So I think a lot of these fads are getting, they're getting, you know, played out. And you start looking at, you know, example, again, you look at Peloton at 260 times earnings. That's 260 years of profits built into that stock. I think it's time to start looking at the reopening of the economy. I think these stocks could bounce here a little bit, but I think that play is somewhat over. And Brian, I want to come back to you, though, because last week we had this discussion and it seemed like you were a little bit afraid of shutdowns, although I give you props. You said shutdowns are coming, but stay the course. Now that we see, again, the virus going back up, how is this informing how you are invested? Uh, you know, as we will see, restrictions increase, but we also know that a vaccine is closer. Which one uh, is, is really dominating how you are thinking now? Yeah, definitely the latter, Charles. And last week, for the record, on Monday, the one thing that I emphasized was you have to worry about a melt-up. And you know us pains. We like to be right. We like to make money. And we've seen that melt up. <laughs> I emphasized it. And I think Monday is the validation. Monday showed you any inclination that the economy is literally reopening faster than we expect. All those beaten down names, you saw those cruise stocks, you saw the airline stocks just jump massively, and you saw that rotation out of tech. And I just think that's the future. I mean, we love the FANG stocks. I know we love the FANG stocks, but the multiples already represent that. So there could be some, you know, there could be some right. more room to move there, but the reopening is the place to be here, period. Okay, I want to shift gears because just moments ago, the American Association of Individual Investors saw, saw a giant spike in investor bullishness. Ryan, usually that's a contrarian thing. I can't remember it being this high all year long. This is one of the biggest week-to-week uh, -week moves I've seen in a long time. Does it make you nervous that, that investors, individual investors, have become this bullish overnight? It does make me a little nervous because I like that contrarian play all year where, you know, basically those AAI numbers have been so low and they have jumped. But you know where that money's going. Like you just said, the bond market, it's going into the S&P 500. We saw $12 billion in inflows last week into the SPY, which is your S&P ETF. So I think, again, Charles, I think too many investors are putting their money in one little place. That's called the S&P 5. And I think that is going to be a problem. So I think you got to broadly diversify your money here to protect yourself because at some point that's going to end badly. And when the public loves it, you know that's not a good sign.